Hi Karan. Hello. Welcome back to Sudhi Podio's channel. Thank you. <laughs> We've seen We're you back. in season one. Yeah. It was a long oh, wow. time back. It was like what five six years five ago. Five years ago. <laughs> wow, it's been a long time. Yes. <laughs> and uh, congratulations for Tumari Sulu. Thank you. Thank you. Your background score has been appreciated Thank widely. You. <laughs> and uh, if you could tell us what have you been doing all these years and what is so, your next project? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of advertising, composing as a working as music director and advertising. I am doing another film which is uh, called Mard Ko Dard Nahi Hota. <laughs> so I'm doing the songs and the score for it. Uh so yeah, so I've been up been up to, you know, mainly this uh, nice. over the last few years. <laughs> so uh in today's conversation you are going to enlighten us oh yeah <laughs> uh, with your experiences on mm -hmm. uh, how to compose mm -hmm. slash arrange produce mm -hmm. for advertising or yeah. for tv yeah so uh, i'm sure you're going to cover a lot of aspects yeah i, I think i'm going to try and cover you know the process of composing for and producing for uh same music for video i'd call it which is for film ads whatever that's just to keep like one blanket term i call it video okay uh yeah so i think what i will cover is not production techniques as such because if you go online you'll find every way from everyone from dead mouse to dr dre to whoever you name it they're all showing you how to shape your kick drum and how to make your mix bigger and all of that so rather than that maybe just talk about how i approach you know the process i'd say from getting a brief from a client to you know communicating with them whether that's a director or client and just you know being in the right frame of mind how to find inspiration how to find uh, creative flow in your work and then i'll talk about you know a bit of some tips and pointers on production and composition great so all yours oh okay <laughs> so yeah i think uh, mainly this video is uh, It, a lot of people wrote in when i asked you know what should i do a video on and i think the best thing that uh, you know i found most interesting is to talk about my approach a lot of people asked for that there were some things where people asked for you know live video a live recording and this and that and production tips but i mean a lot of those were people i know so you can just call me and i'll <laughs> help you out but i think this will help a wider you know audience and uh, some of you might find that it's uh, if you find certain parts basic that's just to uh, just so that it you know covers everyone so i'll be talking about uh, the process of when you get the brief how do you understand it how do you take that information and you know uh, absorb all of that and what do you get from it so firstly it's very important to understand the director or client's vision you know what do they have in mind what are they trying to communicate to you what are they trying to communicate through the film so how do you find this out you you i mean it it may seem a little judgmental but you kind of try to read the person a lot of it is to do with understanding the person understanding their background you know you can it's it's a day to day thing it's human nature you meet someone you automatically you know kind of have an idea of where they're coming from what their interests are what their likes are that sort of thing so you get um you try to understand their sensibilities so that may be you know through a conversation through knowing what music they listen to what kind of film have they made you know uh, they a lot of times they have reference tracks that kind of makes it easier in a way because you know exactly what direction they uh, you know what sort of thing they are looking at also it tells you you know um, what is the i'd say uh, how much of music do they understand in terms of what have they listened to so you understand their background and all of that and then you can take that information and you know take it forward of course there's what does that project or that brand require you know uh, what is it ready for also sometimes it requires a certain style so it's like say it's an ad advertisement where a lot of times they want a premium sounding uh, thing which is which is not generally mass even it's not for everyone it's it's like a premium thing so you have a certain style of music for that you know uh whether it's jazz or it's uh, you know some something like that um there's yeah so what are they ready for sometimes you you know that this film can have something really good something you have in mind but not everyone is ready for it yet so you have to figure that out from the brief you get and from understanding the person 
and then you see how you can get what um, you know what you're trying to achieve and what they're trying to achieve and combine that and uh, obviously you can come to uh, you know some sort of understanding as to where you're going to go uh, now for me the video content is very important of course so you, the story the narrative of course you understand it where is it located geographically what are the people like all of these are very important in you know determining what the music is going to be uh, i'd say colors for me colors are very important and I, I i don't think a lot of people realize this especially when you get a film from someone is that the color really affects how you're going to compose you know it, the visual colors so if it's a green if it's a blue ish looking film that's going to affect and change the way i uh, you know treat the music so those are very important these so these are basic things that you can look for in a film and then you know also get the brief from them understand it and uh, at least you have this information to begin with and then you know where to go from there so the next thing i i like to talk about is um, just being in the right frame of mind the right state of mind and body which is very important when especially when you're working on a day to day basis um in an enclosed space you know that so you need to be in the right frame of mind you need to be patient with a lot of people because you're going to encounter a lot of different people while you're working some may be difficult some may be easy some may be people you build a relationship with over time so you're comfortable so you're going to be in a lot of different psychological as well as creative scenarios each day so how do you so i mean developing patience so for me that's through meditation and all of that which i do a bit uh, exercise or whatever these are i mean fairly straightforward things but also uh you know having just building this confidence that when you go to a studio you have to go and deliver this uh, track on that day so how do you do that just just getting into the habit of doing it just building up that confidence um you know it helps you if if you're in a difficult situation with someone uh just taking a step away from uh, the project just giving yourself some time to think patiently look at it uh, you know with a different approach rather than just fighting what's uh, being thrown at you that's really important i'd say also finding inspiration that's in- that's something that you need to uh, you know is constantly a challenge when you're in like a closed room right so there's certain things you can find that inspiration in so whether it's uh, you know of course watching the film and that inspires you because it's maybe a good film maybe not <laughs> but as much as as much as you know you can get from there uh it's very important that the place you're working in the place you're working in has a great vibe because um you don't want to be in a dark dingy smelly overcrowded room that's never going it's a creative process it's never it's always going to affect you that way so i find that whenever i'm working in a good studio where the people are great the vibe is great it always helps the music always i don't think a lot of people understand that but it's very important to be in a clean good you know workspace so that your work uh, obviously is uh, affected in a positive way and um, a lot of times you get references for films you can use that as inspiration rather than stealing from it so you don't i mean i think in the history of our music there's enough things that have been stolen so we don't need to be stealing anymore we can um, you know just the, the important thing is to crack the vibe of it what feeling is that reference giving you what feeling is that track giving you how do you recreate that without stealing anything from it you yeah, know there's something called flow which is uh, you know I, i've in, i've included these notes along with this video so you'll see a little more about it and you can read it's by a psychologist called Chixin Mihai uh so flow is basically i mean it kind of it helps you understand the creative process and a simple way to understand it is say you're doing something you really love you lose track of time you enjoy yourself so much you know you feel the right amount of challenge and uh, you feel happy at the end of it you're satisfied you know you feel like you can keep going on that's a very simple way of explaining it you can go and read about it it's called flow so it's basically the optimal experience that you can have when you're working and it's um very important to have that very important to be in that state of uh, the creative process to be in a state of flow because if you're not in this state of flow then you're going to you know get upset so if the challenge is too high you're not you're a little scared to do it 
you know if it's something you don't like you're not motivated enough so there's all these things and you find that right balance of flow and that's that's a different thing for everyone you know um some people have some people like a certain thing so they'll and they find it challenging enough so they'll work towards that so you find yours and find your you know uh flow within that uh to help you you know just work with a positive mind so also there's studying music is very very important to study music i i've met like people who are say starting out now they're like yeah bro i just want to be a producer i just i'm not going to learn music just make a beat so that's okay but um it's very very important to to understand what you're doing you can like put a few things together in logic or ableton or whatever and that's great and you have something cool sounding but in in the in when you're in the real world you need to be able to deliver a lot of things if you want you know career in music that's going to last if someone throws whether it's a bollywood song at you or throws a flamenco or latin or whatever style you know an electronic thing you need to be able to produce all of that that's only going to come if you understand music and you understand an instrument and as say a composer producer you need to understand not just music but engineering as well you need to play an instrument it's really important to know this stuff and that's going to help you uh, it's helped me and i keep studying all the time so studying is really important um you know you can also what happens is you get kind of typecasted into like one category a lot like you i make love songs so they, this guy's a love song guy you know and then you can't do anything apart from that so it helps you constantly break these stereotypes you're like oh he did that oh this guy's done that you've done that so you've done all this different stuff uh you know so you're going to break those uh boxes that they put you in and be able to deliver a lot of things musically that's through study of course yeah so we can talk a bit about composition production and arrangement again this is like a very brief uh simple overview of things um just so that it works for everyone uh so of course as you know you should know if <laughs> if you're a musician watching this you know music is made out of is is uh, comprises of harmony melody and uh, uh, rhythm but another thing that's really important is timbre timbre is of course if you google it it's it's what gives a sound a quality it's why you play a string on a guitar or play a string on a violin they sound different because of its physical characteristics of the instrument and all of that but the the unique quality is the timbre and this is really important to understand um especially say an example of it is say pop music there's so many pop songs that have say four chords and they're the same four chords but why is it different apart from of course maybe a different beat and all of these things how is it that for centuries they've managed to you know keep recreating that so it's important to understand that it's also timbre especially now constantly being able to try and create new sounds new sounding sounds uh within a structure that we all know you know so really important as a part of production constantly trying to take what uh you know familiar structures but um you know just adding something to it uh, a different sound to it that will make it uh, seem new that's also part of uh, what production is actually you know production is a lot of people think production is oh this guy makes the beat he programs sequences everything arranges that's it but production is also about you know firstly it's a balance between knowing what uh, knowing music knowing engineering you you're the common link between that and how to take that knowledge and find a new sound whether it's if you're producing an artist if you're, you're producing your your own stuff or producing a band or whatever it is you know so that's something that's super important listening to the the quality of sound the timbre of a sound and i think i'm talking about this because a lot of people ask me how are you getting those sounds right so it's very important to listen and understand how to design this these things within familiar structures yeah i'd say within the studio uh while composing producing it's very important now you're probably going to call live musicians it's very important to know how to communicate with them if you don't know the the key or song is in and they will test you because that's what they do they they want a new guy that they're trying to work with they will ask him what the key is just to see if he knows <laughs> if you don't cuz a lot of them can just tell by ear you know so if you don't know that if you can't communicate something that basic 
then it's not going to help you know and if you if they want to feel inspired if you want to feel inspired if you want to have a musical dialogue to take your project to the next level to find something new within what's there because you can call the same five musicians that everyone is calling and they i'm sure everyone knows all the big musicians and they're very accessible anyone can call them but if they come and play the same thing that they played everywhere else that's not going to help you know your project in any way it's not going to sound unique in any way so it's it's very important to try and understand music try and understand how to communicate with them try and find if you understand all of this you'll know how to get something new with them to collaborate with them right so the other thing is composition can be in modern times can be you know anything of any nature rhythmic melodic uh, you know it could be just a production idea so it's not always a song that people come up with but what's important is it should sound if you're making a song that is it should sound great as a song in its most basic form so whether it's just a guitar and voice and just a piano and voice which is why i said you should know an instrument is cuz um if it works in its most basic form then it's always going to work no matter what kind of production you throw at it or if sometimes you have a great production idea but then you're just stuck with that one thing and you don't know where to go from there so you have this one great loop that sounds amazing the sounds are great it's you know you're feeling a great vibe from it but you don't know where to take it because you've not created an an entire so- uh, song in its most basic form with it so you have your melody you have say one instrument figure it out and then you can get interesting production ideas so it'll sit um you know within within what that song uh, within what that melody and that song is it's very important to understand sound production techniques you know so that's your synthesis sampling uh what else recording effects dynamics uh this will help you understand how to get a certain kind of sound so you know someone asked me how do you get a sound that's in your head like how do you translate that you know if it's not say a guitar or a piano or something if it's an electronic sound or it's something that you know i want this kind of sound how do you get it so it's um through understanding these things in depth is the only way you're going to get it also maybe look out for um you know things like what is the what is that sound closest to does it is does it have a woody sound does it have a metallic sound does it sound like knocking on glass does it you know sound sustained does it bored so how do you get these uh maybe out of a synthesizer how do you get these by you know tweaking a certain kind of sample so it's it's kind of it kind of goes over into sound design in a way but it's very important if you know these techniques that's how you'll know how to translate it and i think that's and it's practice because i think when i first started production i had no idea how how to get that sound that's in my head and even now it's not always uh, you know 100% there um but at least it's a lot closer like i okay this is going to be in playing in it and i know how to maybe you know come up with that idea come up with that sound so it's just giving it time and understanding the processes involved but yeah a simple way to maybe uh, uh uh you know start off in that is of course you open like say a synth open a, a preset and of course tweak it uh, but then try and reverse engineer just find out how wh- why is it sounding like that how is that being made so the next time you know you have time and you're um working on a sound that's within that territory you know where to begin you know how to arrive at that sound and then where to take it from there how to make it different from there yeah and everything isn't i mean eq compression everyone talks about production they're like you need eq you need compression how do i make this sound big eq compression how do i do that eq compression so eq compression is great you need to understand it really well uh, well but there's a lot of other aspects like understanding other aspects of dynamics it's not just compression understand what gating is what an expander does understand things like transient shaping you know transient shaping is very important and i don't think a lot of people use it it's so it's say your kick drum um the envelope and transient shaping rather say you have a kick drum and uh, listen listen to your track is it is the envelope of it is the tail of it too long is, to sit in your groove can you shorten it out you know and that creates more impact and uh, energy in your music so 
it's these little things that kind of make the difference in how you make a track or a piece of music sound cleaner and nicer and bigger. Also, reverb, I'd say, is not your enemy. Use reverb because uh, it gives you a feeling of space, especially in modern electronic music where you're not, the sounds aren't coming out of the room. You need to understand how to use reverb in a clean way. Reverb is not always big and massive. It depends on how you use it and how you tweak it for your own sound, which could be through EQ on the reverb, through the right amount of reverb, choosing the right plugin, um, you know, to produce uh, that sound. Yeah, I think a lot of people are moving towards a cleaner sound, but cleaner doesn't necessarily mean without reverb, doesn't mean dry. It's just how you, uh, you know, position it in a reverb space. The other thing I'd say is learn more about spatial processing making things wider, understanding how it sits, how to make room for it, how to make things larger. If you listen to really good mixes, they always sound massive. So why do your mixes sound so narrow? So find ways of, you know, widening your mixes uh, and your elements within a track, how to position them, all of that is very important in getting a bigger sound. One super important thing I want to talk about is arrangement. When you're arranging a track, a lot of people ask me, um, how do your tracks sound so minimal and clean? I'd say it's not minimal, it's clean. Because sometimes I may have a hundred tracks, but it sounds super clean. Or sometimes I might have five, and that's minimal, yeah. So how do you get that? It's, um, it comes from understanding how, you know, elements in a piece of music sit together. Firstly, you listen, you'll find a chart online saying that okay kick drum is in this range and snares sit here and maybe your guitars sit there which is all great it's all cool to look at when you're mixing but just when you're composing just just listening to the sound of it does this sit with that it's as basic as that is it does it sound good and does it sit with that if it doesn't throw it out right don't say i'll fix it in the mix because that's the worst that's where you're going wrong it's like the basic rule of you know, music uh, production or engineering is you need to have a great source. Whether it's electronic, whether it's live recorded, your source material has to sound really, really good and it has to sit, it has to complement each other really well. So that's really important. If you try to fix things in the mix, just leave, leave uh, you know, 5% to your mix. That okay, this is going to get 5% better. Think of it, go with that uh, logic in your head and that way you'll end up actually getting a much better mix. If you say, yeah, I've done like 50% and 50% is mixed, they'll fix it, they'll make everything sound cool, you're going to end up with a turd and you just get a polished turd. You, you want to get like a polished diamond, right? So you, if your sounds are great to begin with, they sit together well, then uh, that's, that's always going to work better. So of course, understanding where, what frequency each range each thing sits in, also understanding, playing the right voicings in your chords. Um, you know, I'd say uh, giving each thing its room, not unnecessarily filling things up. You can find new ways of giving something energy without crowding your music. Um, I'd say at, at a time, there's probably like five elements maybe that, that you know, the, the, your, your brain will register. So there's like, of course, there's like the beat, the rhythm, there's the melody, there's the harmony that, you know, makes you feel different ways based on the harmony. And of course, there's the, the timbre, the quality of sound, what it sounds like. Um, what else? Maybe the pulse, the, the bass, how it's driving you. And that's all that's going to register at a time. So if you're going to fill it up with 10,000 things, none of those are going to register. It's going to be like traffic. You're walking through traffic. And maybe we're used to that, which is why... You know, a lot of uh, stuff you hear is so crowded because we're used to so much traffic around us. But even if you're walking on the street through the traffic, it's all going on. But you're probably listening to one or two things. Your mind is not on all of that. It's the same with music. Even though you're listening attentively, there's probably these five things that are going to register. So you'd rather have those five things sounding really, really good rather than having, you know, 3000 things and everything is trying to fight for your attention. Um, yeah, if you listen to some of the, like the biggest hits or the biggest tracks, you know, in uh, anywhere and you take off, say, the voice, what you're going to listen to is like maybe four, five elements. That's it. 
I think a lot of people fail to realize that voice gives a track a lot of energy. This is not musicians, let's say it's mainly, say, uh, directors or, you know, people you work for. So they don't realize that energy doesn't come from filling up a track. It comes from the voice as well. It comes from the melody as well. But you can also get a lot more energy just by having less and making it bigger because you get more level as well. You get more headroom to work with. You can make things bigger and fatter just by having enough, not having too much. So it's very important to understand pop music, to study pop music. Um, don't be a snob about it. You know, don't say I only play jazz. That's great. <laughs> but to compose for like uh, any form of video or any commercial industry, you need to understand pop music. It has certain structures uh, that you should study, which you know, if you, if you understand them and understand how it works, you can understand how uh, to create excitement, how to manipulate the listener into feeling this, you know, sense of excitement, how to uh, create an elevated mood in them, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, also, it I think it, it applies to a lot of musicians because a lot of music that you listen to, uh, a lot of some independent music, you know, uh, where people are writing their own songs, um, if you don't understand these structures, these pop structures, a lot of the times the music is a little aimless, you know, in where it's going. So this really helps you understand how to, uh, you know, craft your song from a production or arrangement point of view. So yeah, super important to study pop structures. The next thing would be, okay, you finished your track, you're giving it to the engineer. So what are some tips that you need to, you know, keep in mind? Uh, firstly, get your sound and your balance right as you go. I mean, that's how I've been working for years since I started. You get the sound right that you're working with. Of course, you have musically or the tune or whatever, or the harmony, right? But you get your sound right and you get your balance as you're going, as a compo as a producer. You, you know, get it as you're going. Um, make sure there's proper gain staging. Nothing should be clipping. So if you have a track, your master should not be clipping, the track should not be clipping, none of the plugins inside should be clipping, it should be a clean, good sound. Uh, you don't want to give them something bad to work with, of course. This is fairly basic, I'd say. This is how it should happen. Um, your tracks should not be named audio underscore 1.7. It should have proper tracks names. Uh, you get a lot more respect for <laughs> working like that if your tracks are well named. I say, of course, communicate with your engineer. Communicate and ask for opinions on the sounds you're using, on the structure you're using. They have a lot of experience with a lot of different composers, different clients, everything. So it's very important to understand what, you know, uh, their perspective is on it. They're going to mix it eventually. So they'll, you know, help you understand. Um, of course, be respectful when dealing with them, goes without saying. Uh, again, I want to stress on the fact that you should make sure your source material is great. You don't cannot don't expect everyone to fix it because sometimes you can't fix it. So make sure your sounds are so good that they sound mixed to you already so that when it goes to them, it's only going to get better. Also, I think uh, the other thing is um, dynamics. So I'd say don't compress, over compress or limit anything when you give it out. Uh, what I do is maybe I'd parallel compress something. So that what that way it helps because as long as you can make sure you know there, there's no phasing through delay compensation uh, or lack of delay compensation or whatever as long as you don't have any of those issues, make sure maybe try parallel compressing instead of compressing because um, that way it gives while you still get a beefier sound, you still get uh, give the engineer room to work with. It's not something that's hard limited and then you can't do anything with it. So very important tip before you, you know, give your tracks out. I guess we've gone over a lot of things that just kind of cover the whole process. So I'd say to conclude, most important thing that you, during any of these music processes is to really have fun with what you're doing. Because in the end, if you, you're doing music, that, that itself is amazing. Or you'd be doing like a desk job somewhere. So don't treat, don't get into a situation where you're, it's beca it becomes a desk job still have fun. Music is fun and that's why you got into it. So have fun. That's very important. Another important thing, a lot of people, you know, a lot of musicians say that, oh, Indian music is trash. I don't want to work in Bollywood. It's shit. 
all of this which is okay if that's how you see it but if you are such a good musician then you should be part of it right if if uh, if you are frustrated about it then be a part of it and try and change that rather than you know just scribbling about it and not doing anything about it crying and writing online about it and you know just being bitter it's no point being bitter just maybe be a part of it if you feel you you're that good and you can change things you might as well be in it um so yeah I'd send in comments maybe <laughs> uh and these are my views now they may change over the next two years or whatever keep evolving so maybe i'll come back and talk more and if there's any specific stuff that anyone wants to know like a little maybe more in depth stuff related to production uh music whatever you can always uh get in touch with me I'm quite accessible that way approachable yeah <laughs> cool so yeah